you won't even know that you've lost your grip. So this can be already good for a residential person, but it can be good for, a, I don't know, a hospital, for example, an embassy, a factory, a petrol station. The whole point of the system is we're integrating everything into one box. So you don't need to have four or five boxes, you just need to have one box. So I'm going to take you through some of the features of this box right now and talk about why this is exactly what you need for an environment where you have high dust, poor access to maintenance, you need power, you have to grid stability, you want to electrify a mini grid or it's just difficult to get to in general. So this is useful for um, electrification programs, for mining, for banks uh, that are in, in remote areas, anything where your grid is unstable, this is exactly what you want. So maybe we can start at the core of this system is the inverters which we have up here. And these inverters here, this is a very well-known uh, German company. These inverters are 25 kVA each. That means that the inverters can continuously output 25 kilowatts. But they can, what's really special about them is they can put 75 kilowatts out for half a second. So you have four of them right now, which means we actually have a nominal half a second power for 300 kilowatts. That's crazy much. So let's say you're running a base load of 50, 60 kilowatts and your grid trips, then you're able to make a seamless ATS integration, the automatic transfer switch, which is also built in here, will basically make a transfer for you. You won't even know that you've lost your grid. So this can be already good for a residential person, but it can be good for, a, I don't know, a hospital, for example, an embassy, a factory, a petrol station, many, many different applications for this. It could also be a village. It could be a village at the end of the power line. The power line is unstable, loses power, the village keeps on going. So a lot of customers, for electricity further upstream will lose power but the village will stay online which would be quite a the opposite way normally where you prioritize the villages last that's kind of primary what this system was designed for really was uh, electrification of uh, uh, rural areas we have the inverters up here and then we have these batteries here these are just dummy batteries right now they're just nothing inside them lfp 800 volts nothing special really going on here air cooled uh, this is the BM bmu but these are air cooled because you don't want to have liquid cool in a, in a complex scenario. You don't want to be dealing with a, a type of specialized liquid that you have lost if you're in the middle of a desert trying to do a service and you're taking a battery out and put another one in and suddenly you spill your tank and then you maybe put tap water in, then your battery is going to be ruined pretty much instantly. So we stick with good old fashioned air cooling. Another thing we have here is an isolator. This is, by the way, an, an older model. The newer ones are like a, a push one with a fuse built into it and a little closing mechanism. The point is, when the installers work on the system here, they can isolate every single battery individually. And by doing so, what they can do is make the system safe to operate. If you're working as a installer and you have maybe experience with, you know, standard AC voltage system and you have experience with fixing batteries, but 800 volts is a different beast altogether. That is basically deadly if you do something wrong here. So an 800 volt system, you don't want to be dealing with that unless you're in, in live mode. So the first thing you can do in here is disconnect so this is what they would be like if they're live in this system here. Disconnect them all, check your voltage, 76 volts, boom, you're safe. 76 volts will not kill you, it's almost impossible. And now you have a system which is safe to work on. So now you know that you're not gonna have a dangerous situation in DC. That's your main priority, right? Now we're safe to go. We're working on the system, apart from having, of course, made the DC voltage safe. When we open the door, this switch, this by the way also an earlier model, we're gonna have a proximity sensor with the next version. This proximity sensor has actually turned off the system. So you can now put the system into zero, which means that now the system is also off. It's actually turning off for several ways, several reasons. So zero means the system is off. One means best mode. So that's like all the bells and whistles of the system. And number two is ATS mode. And I'll get to this a little bit later on why we have this. But let's say the system is we're integrating everything into one box. So you don't need to have four or five boxes, you just need to have one box. Now we're down here, we can also look at some of the other connection points that we have. We have here, connector, for the incoming grid. And next to it, we have a outgoing four pole connector for the supply. So the supply doesn't have a CT on it. And the reason it doesn't do that, doesn't have that, it's actually because we're virtually measuring the the current going through here with our with our you know our system and so we don't need to have a ct everywhere that's one place we can avoid it and it's exactly right here so that's pretty cool next thing we have lightning protection we have lightning protection on all the incoming and outgoing here so in case there's some kind of um, you know lightning strike we have a way to basically move this energy away from the main system and into the system up and running Another feature of the system is it has an inbuilt ATS. We have all this fancy switch gear we can cover up this later on. Down here, we have an ATS component. This is like, if you were to buy an ATS, 
a good old fashioned analog one that just says my voltage is in range and a few other things like that turns one off your generator with a genset with a quad. That's what you would find. And when you put this into mode number two, this one up here, you turn off all the fancy hardware and you just go straight into ATS mode. ATS mode is something that an installer is going to be able to understand. This is something that millions of people have in the world. ATS mode is your friend. If BESS and all the fancy technology we have here fails in one way or another, you can basically just put it into ATS mode and it could run there, take power from the grid, take power from the generator. Yeah, you burn some fuel, you pay some grid, but at least you can have power in between. So that's our backup ATS mode, but the primary mode, of course, of this system is what's coming through the Comap controller right here. And this Comap controller here is quite a piece of engineering. This is like a hybrid controller that can do, it, you can do megawatts, you can, th th this system can actually act as a, as a master controller to very, very large mini grid application. Our primary Comap device, which is the one that's controlling the battery and the inverters and two of the contactors, one for the grid in and one for the loadout. And Inside this uh, Comap controller, we can effectively make settings in terms of grid quality. What do we expect? So we can say we will have thresholds for voltage, for frequency, you know, the power quality and so on to decide are we going to accept to have the grid coming in or not. If we don't accept the grid, it is full and outside of range. This guy will effectively tell the thing, system to disconnect the grid because you want to disconnect yourself from the grid if you have a, a bad grid, right? Because a bad grid will destroy your system. So this system can protect you. So like I was saying before, the the ATS can protect you, but it's kind of a crude way. It's just saying, I'm at this end or this end, you operate inside these two areas. But simple. So if you look at a, if you look at normally a distribution box that has this level of functionality, you would see probably five times more cable. I'm not even like exaggerating. We've removed so much cable. I think 90% of the cable ended up being gone. Over Our system is super clean on the inside. There's no humidity on the inside, there's no dust, there's no nothing. So when you open up a system of ours, after five years of operation, everything is completely the way it was before. The only thing that's gonna be completely mucked up is this guy here. And if you just come out and clean this like once a year or something like that, and even in a terrible environment, you can hose it down. Or if it's like, it depends on the dust type, you can also blow it with a um, you know compressor. And then the, all the crap will fall out here down through the bottom, get blown out and settle down here in the bottom. It's dead because it's got 40 millimeters of foam inside it. You can't hear that. It's very important to have this insulation material. So one of the considerations here is also to not have too many thermal bridges from the outside into the inside. So it's, it's actually on purpose also that it's not too connected. So the idea is to have these large flat surfaces and there's just no way to get a, um, a energy from the um, outside into the inside. Because outside you have ambient, maybe plus 40 temperature, plus sunlight. So even if this is made in white, about 50% of the heat from the sun will be absorbed into the metal here. And that directly heats the structure here. So you don't want that thermal load to be going onto the inside. Yeah, that's energy lost. Uh, and there's no point of losing that energy.